Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, you're joining me towards the end of one of my greatest sessions of World of Tanks. And hopefully, I'm going to remember to put the stats up here. 64 games of World of Tanks played straight, entering in game number 65 in my trusty IS-32, which I'm going to be talking about. I think it's one of the best tier 9 heavy tanks and probably one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game. So why have I been playing World of Tanks so much? Well, Marathon Monday stream, which is 12 hours long, has been happening over the last couple of months because Wargaming are giving really cool drops to the European server through Twitch creators like me. People have been getting vehicles like the Type 64 and the TOG completely for free, guaranteed just by tuning in, albeit over the last couple of months, and it's no longer possible, it's too late. But maybe if there's a future one, you'll be able to jump on the bandwagon. So I've been playing a lot, and yesterday's session was, I was about 10 hours, 11 hours into the stream when I was about to jump into this game, but I was more fired up in this game than ever before, because as you could see, on the line was a flush 80% win ratio for the entire evening. That's unprecedented for me. I don't think I've ever played World of Tanks for so long. At the end of this battle, 65 games and had a battle for the 80% win ratio over the entire session. Absolutely crazy. Now, my average win ratio on my account is uh, 62%. But that's also taking into account playing awful vehicles like the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, which I maybe only win 52% of my games overall. When I play a tank like this, the IS-32, I can usually get about 75% wins playing solo. It's outrageous, I know, but that's just, I have an affinity with this vehicle and I can make it work. And maybe I'm getting a little bit lucky as well with the 130 or games that I've played in this tank. So don't think that I can sustain 80%. I'll talk to you overall about how I feel. I'm just judging myself by my own statistics. And you you should just scale it for however, however you feel and how you play inside the game. Just quickly though. Oh baby. Yeah, doubling a chieftain on the enemy team. Oh, that's going to get a big double thumbs up from me. One of the most dangerous tanks to take out. In a session... If I'm playing really, really badly and I'm getting really bad teams, I might win 45% overall of my games. If I'm playing well and I'm getting really bad teams, I might win 50%. If I'm playing really well but I'm getting really bad teams still, probably 55 If I'm playing okay and I get okay teams, I get about 60%. Now, if I am having an absolute stonking session and I've got reasonably good teams, you know, 65-70. This evening was a case I was getting really good teams and I was also playing absolutely wild at the same time. It's not like I was just grinding the same tank for these 65 games. I probably played about 60 different vehicles over the course of the evening. It's a lot easier to play World of Tanks when you're only playing the same tank again and again and again because you just get a feeling for the gun handling, you get a feeling for the vehicle and the way that it plays. And it's actually quite a challenge to be able to, to play like a wide variety of tanks if you're, if you're try-harding. So... Being at this cusp of having possibly one of the, the greatest sessions, I think, with regards to win rate for me over the evening, undoubtedly I got very lucky, but I had to have some tremendous carries along the way. And today you're going to see whether this is going to be a tremendous carry or a tremendous heartbreak. So I was absolutely heartbroken here, seeing that the Object 430U just pushed across the Progetto 65 and has now got a really good defensive location up there. It was just during my Art of Strategy video that you saw that contesting that area is very important because it allows you to just get shots all the way down into the town. And right now I'm between a rock and a hard place. If there's one thing that I really didn't want to see on the enemy team was tier 10 tanks when I'm trying to win the game, right? It's harder to carry when you're a low tier vehicle. Although when you can double the lower place of an E75, it doesn't seem to be that hard, right? But what I really didn't want to see on the enemy team was an Object 279E matched up against an IS-4 and a Chieftain matched up against a Super Conqueror on my team. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that's not good pickings, right? For an IS-3-2 immediately. So I could tell that the game was setting me a challenge. But sometimes you just got to rise to it. And well, look, I'm not suggesting that every single game is winnable. I've talked about that earlier this year. That I'd say that probably about one in five games that you load into, no matter if you're the best player in the world, you have no chance of winning, even if you're playing with all of the advantages. Go and check out that video. Uh, it was called How Many Games of World of Tanks Can You Win? Which I released, I believe, in January. But what I'm trying to suggest is this one is right on the cusp of ha having to have a huge impact with the matchmaker throwing, you know, two 790s and chieftains on the enemy team, obviously half-decent players playing them if we're going to be able to take it down. 
All right, so in this situation, I'm going to be firing a lot of gold. I'm probably going to be firing gold the entire game. Because right now, the last thing that I could care about would be credits, uh, especially when I need to go through vehicles that are just completely flat out overpowered, like the Object 279E. So I'm reversing into the, this position to see if I can be able to get clean shots into this tank, but I also don't want him to be able to have clean shots into me. The Cranvan comes around the corner. I'm immediately going to use my repair kit on my fuel tank because I'm not using a fire extinguisher. One thing I must say is I'm really impressed by how my team managed to actually hold that western flank. So while I was worried about the 430U getting up there, GG to my medium tanks for being able to handle them. Okay, so we just managed to put three rounds on the trot into a 279E, and it doesn't look like anyone else on my team has actually managed to be able to penetrate him, so I guess I'm going to have to go and help out this Cranvang. He obviously has no idea how to deal with a 279E. We're going to put one shell in. I'm going to ask the T40, uh, the IS-4 for help, and finally the IS-4 manages to penetrate a shot. And you know what, 279E, if you want to turn towards me, that's absolutely fine. Hopefully the IS-4 will kill him, but it looks like the IS-4 actually decides to just track the Object 279E booty, and so we're forced to put another shot onto it the side of his tank. And are we gonna double here? Are we gonna double here? Oh yes we are. No, we actually managed to, looks like we hit the wall slightly in front of me. Bit of a misplay there. But um, I guess I can forgive myself after 64 games of World of Tanks and about 10 hours of trying to rab it on on Twitch. And I was super pumped up after that kill. The Object 279E thought they had a good opportunity to isolate, but I don't think that they expected that the IS-32 on the enemy team was going to be played by someone who was fighting for an 80% win ratio in 64 games of World of Tanks. We managed to shut them down. And that's where you've got to dive on. You've got to dive on those opportunities. And luckily for me, oh, not such good play there, though. Coming around the corner, don't get a clean shot into the Super Conqueror. I don't really feel comfortable being able to get the extra shell into the top of his tank. So I'm only going to fire one. And this was me kind of feeling that maybe I had a bit of an adrenaline rush from killing the Object 279E. And I wanted to try and press the tempo. But we can see that without high explosive anti-tank grounds, we're unable to go through the top of the Super Conqueror's weak point when he is using a little bit of his gun depression. So I tell my E50 to fall back. I tell my IS-4 to fall back. I don't, really don't think that just grinding through that situation is really going to work out for us. So instead, I'm going to try and put some pressure up on other parts of the map. What we really need to happen right now is hopefully some of these tanks up on the hill to go and push the opportunity against a bat chat who's on half health. Because unless we win one of the flanks, this is not going to work out well for us. And talking about not working out well, oh dear, the AMX 1390 just manages to finish off the TVP down that flank. And I think he was undoubtedly getting some support from the Czechoslovakian autoloader on the enemy team in the form of the equal measure TVP. So I'm going to ask the E50 for help. Um, but I'm going to ask the E50 to take the corner. I'm going to say e, E5 dash. I guess I missed my zero key there. Uh, to take the corner of this map because it's oh so important that we don't let the 1390 make their way in. If the 1390 is allowed to take this corner, then this E50 is just going to completely lose the position. And you know what? Massive shout out to you in the E50. What was your name? The JK Panzer, the Joke Panzer. Well, you aren't playing like a joke in this game, buddy, because you are making an awesome play here to go and take the corner to secure the flank. If the 1390 mate wants to make his way across here in the open, well, that's going to be brilliant for us because we're going to have a cross fly. What we really can't allow to happen right now is for the enemies to take the flank. So thank you so much to you, Mr. E50, for going and securing that flank. All right, so unfortunately for me, we spot a 257 who's on full health. And you'll see that I'm turning my turret towards the right because it's actually an opportunity for your opponents to be able to get shots across there. And look at that. Just as the E50 manages to take the corner, now the TVP is pushing. Now we have a Leopard opening fire. Now we have an E50 opening fire as well. Managing to shave off 800 hit points off the TVP before he's managed to take the corner. Unfortunately, he does. I would have preferred it if the E50 had managed to get into these bushes and they would have probably been able to take out the entirety of the TVP if they had been there. But you know what? You can't ask for everything. And just that kind of communication with your team, if you really have a good grasp on what needs to happen, uh, just, just try. You know, maybe your team isn't always going to listen, but when you have moments like that where the E50 listens to you, oh, that's great. Tell you what isn't great though, the fact that I just lost 469 hit points to the Leopard 1. I really didn't expect him to be there and I just bounced a heat round off my butt. Looks like I am getting lucky here. But you know what? I'll take all the luck I can get because I realized that a draw might as well be a loss with regards to my win ratio, right? And with five minutes left on this game and 5,000 hit points before the, uh, 
the damage was taken there by the 257. Yeah, this was going to be a very close game to be able to win. And when they've got so many positions around, it's going to be incredibly hard to be able to win with only five minutes left. Luckily, however, I realized I'm on an encounter map. So as long as we can hold the center and maybe control like one of the flanks, then it's not going to be the biggest issues. So hopefully this 430 is going to risk some of their tier 9 Soviet medium tank hit points and be able to make their way up towards the western flank here and dig this bat chat out. Now, luckily for me, the bat chat is now down to a single shot, and so I'm going to be blind firing gold rounds. I, if I was obviously a single shot tank here, or I had intuition on the vehicle, I would probably switch out to regular rounds here. But at the moment, again, the credits were the last thing on my mind. At least once in World of Tanks, I wanted to have an 80% win ratio by not just playing overpowered vehicles over the entirety of a session. And this was the game for it. So luckily for me, the 430 is pressing up. He hasn't taken any damage, and I'm thinking, what's the best way I can support him? Well, clearly, if he's made his way to there, the bat chat isn't in that location, so instead, he's probably going to spot out the leopard, so I might make my way around the corner. I've also got to watch out for the fact that there's a 257 on the enemy team who will be able to shut me down in a moment's notice. So I'm hoping this bat chat is going to come around the corner. I fire a shell, and I ricochet off his upper hull. Disaster there, leaving the tier 10 French autoloader on 300 hit points is pretty much just as dangerous It's 80 or 90% as dangerous at that kind of range as leaving him on full hit points. So the IS-4 manages to try and get locked down in this 257 and I'm worried about this Leopard being able to jam me in the side. But right now with only 3 minutes and 20 seconds left on this game, I'm just praying that my team are going to push up the west. And I was feeling very pent up right now. I'm just asking them to push, asking them to push the bat chat. And I say, guys, play or lose. And talk about play or lose. Uh, hello, Mr. Leopard, what are you doing? I was honestly thinking about doubling there, but then I just decided to fire a single. Probably should have still fired a double, but it was almost, almost more important for me just to be able to get a shot on target. And I thought the Leopard was going to keep going. When he stopped, just fire a single at the stationary target and then try and get into cover. So I keep pinging the map, I'm keeping on pinging the G1 area to try and let the team know that all they have to do is push the bat chat out now with 2 minutes and 40 seconds left on this game. And I'm not going to be able to push against a 257 who's on half hit points. I've done 6,000 damage in this game but I'm down to 145 hit points and there is the 257. Come on IS-4, do it buddy. I, I want to press around the corner but I don't want to get caught by the bat chat. But with not a moment to spare, I just decide that I've got to commit to the situation. You know what, if the bat chat's still there and he shoots me, well maybe he reveals his position or at least I can ping the map to let my team know where he is. So I fire a shot on the move against the 257 who actually exposes himself to the leopard up on the west. And now I realize with two minutes left on the game, as long as I have another tank helping me in the cap circle, there's still a good chance to be able to take this one down. So the Valiant E50 on my team seems to have a good idea of what to do as well because the E50 says all move into base. And I say three cap now uh, a few times. And the WZ114, who's also dead, says three cap as well. It's almost as if all of the players who are dead on our team are still watching this battle and getting behind the action here. I'm hoping that my team is going to shut down this bat chat. Come on, boys. There's three of you. There's one of him. Fantastic stuff. And now, with one minute and ten seconds, I could feel my heart racing, my heart pounding. Was this going to be... The huge carry, the 6,000 damage carry, with so much damage dealt against the Chieftain, so much damage dealt against the Object 279E. Even with fatigue setting in, probably my nerves starting to be frayed, maybe a little bit of a little bit of shakes after 10 hours of World of Tanks testing your judgement to hopefully be able to, uh, to come through this one. And I don't like what I'm doing here. That greedy play against the TVP could have ended up with me getting caught by the 1390. And if they'd hit me, they probably would have been able to reset the cap. And so I realized, bad quacky baby, don't go for the damage. No matter how much you want to be able to shoot the TVP in this scenario, just get back, just get safe, and think about where the 1390 might be coming from. With five, four, three, two... One, and the Object 430 on my team says, awesome. Yes, yes. Like, I don't usually would use that word to describe a feeling that I had playing World of Tanks. But this, ladies and gents, boys and girls, this had me pent up. This had me super happy. This was awesome. As with that result, a session of 64 games and 79.69% wins became a session of 65 games and now 
80% wins. And while I undoubtedly got lucky, not just in that session, but also in this game, any one of those shells that hit my tank when I was on low health could have been able to finish me off. You don't get these kind of results without getting those fortunate ricochets. 6,600 damage, nets us a high caliber and that amount of damage in a tier 9, mostly against tier 10 tanks, will give you an ace tanker with 1,453 base experience. But I undoubtedly paid for it. Oh, 67,000 credits lost even with a premium account. But honestly, uh, yeah, just to have this screenshot, I was completely stoked. Now, full disclosure, this wasn't my best wargaming rating for a session. This definitely wasn't my best average damage or assistance. But it was one of those kind of evenings where I had really good teams. And when you have really good teams, then there's often less damage and less spotting to be dealt to be able to, to win at least, should we say, the majority of your battles. Nevertheless, getting lucky alone wouldn't have achieved this session. I really had to dig deep in quite a few games, just like you saw in the IS-3-2 to turn a few of what would have been losses into my team's favor. I'm just so stoked. I'm really stoked that even after 10 years of playing this game, I still feel so darn motivated to play for the team, to play to win, and for the game to reward me that for maybe just one session, uh, I don't think I can really end up blaming my team. And if you're interested in me doing a deep dive on win ratio and what is actually achievable, for a player inside World of Tanks, and I would thoroughly recommend going and checking out a video that I released from January the 2nd of this year, um, and specifically, what can affect your win ratio, as we saw there. If any of you have ever asked yourself the question of how many games of World of Tanks are actually winnable. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what was your greatest ever session of World of Tanks and why and what vehicles were you playing. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.